Good morning, I'm Neva Reti Manu, and this is your morning news fix for Thursday, 5th of October. In this update, Winston Peters retains his kingmaker position in the latest poll. A fresh One News variant survey shows support for all parties is steady, apart from ACT, which fell 2 points to 10%. With National on 36%, the right bloc doesn't have the seats to govern as a two-party coalition. Newsdog ZB political editor Jason Wall says we're seeing a clear trend. New Zealand First 6% will be needed in Cabinet. So it's time for Chris Luxon to start thinking really seriously about some of the concessions that he's going to have to give the political veteran known as Winston Peters. Labour is on 26%, the Greens are on 13 and Te Pati Māori is on 2%. Chris Hipkins regrets the division COVID-19 vaccination has caused. The Labour Party leader answered questions from voters and party faithful in a virtual town hall forum last night while he isolates with COVID. He says the pandemic response is the elephant in the room this election and he's proud of New Zealand having very high levels of vaccination. But I also do recognise that was through that vaccination campaign that we started to see some division in our COVID response, which up until that point had been a very united response to COVID. And there was a moment of candour from National's health spokesperson during a debate over Pharmac. During a health debate last night, Labour's Aisha Verrill was challenged over our access to medicines ranking at the bottom of the OECD. She defended the government's record, saying Labour's built up the level of funding, with a 41% increase to the medicines budget since they came in. Verrill also pointed the finger at the previous national government for not increasing funding. Shane Retty says he accepts they could have done better and he'll own that. A retail advocate says the latest Retail NZ crime report is worth paying attention to. The reports found the sector lost just under $2.6 billion from retail crime in the year to August. It's also found 92% of retailers had suffered a crime in the past year. Chair of Auckland Sandringham Business Association, Chitin Chittibomber, says sometimes the people working the shops are lost in the conversation about crime. This is just not a store. These are people, you know, families, family-owned businesses, real people in these businesses being affected financially, mentally. Marlborough could have to cough up millions more than first thought for road repairs. Cost estimates for fixing the flood-damaged transport system have increased by $74 million to a total of $234 million. Marlborough District Council Chief Executive Mark Wheeler told Kate Hawksby the community will struggle. We spread our road and costs across all 27,000 ratepayers and they're looking at something like 10% rate increase in a few years' time. Wheeler says this estimate assumes Waka Kotahi can provide financial assistance. In sport, football governing body FIFA has confirmed the Men's 2030 World Cup will be held across six countries in three continents. Spain, Portugal and Morocco will co-host, but the opening three matches will take place in Uruguay, Argentina and Paraguay. A hip complaint has placed Ben Stokes in doubt for England's opening 50-over World Cup cricket match against New Zealand tonight in Ahmedabad. And Liam Lawson has been confirmed to stand in for Alpha Tauri at a fifth straight Formula One Grand Prix this weekend in Qatar. I'm Neva Reti Manu and that's your latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update at midday from the Newstalk ZB Newsroom.